Now we know that we cannot use Google Analytics, the old one, the universal version. We cannot use it until next year. For some in July 23, for some three months later. So depending if you are on a 360 account or not. So we have to think about setting up Google Analytics 4, a decision that a lot of people have postponed until now because it's not so easy to do because both systems are quite different. And today we want to look really at the core because the differences already start at the data model. And if you want to learn what's really different on the data model, stay tuned. So um, I want to do this in a really, really short video. So because in the end, everyone is telling about that the data model in Google Analytics 4 is totally different than the data model in the universal one, which is true. But in the end, um, it's not so complicated as a sound from the outside. Because yes, um, there are significant differences, but once you understand them, um, it should be definitely okay for you. And maybe you even see the benefits of the new model, especially when you work with custom events and or if you are planning to work with custom events. Uh, because in my point of view, they become a lot easier unless they are different to the first one. So let's look into that. So let's first look what we are using today. And so we have uh, Google Analytics um, Universal. And here we have something, everything is built around, which is the page view. Um, and additionally, the sessions. And the reason for that is like, I mean, the software is pretty old, uh, so it got introduced in 2006, and um, and this was basically the data model that was already there, and uh, it's pretty easy to explain. 2006 was a world where, also like analytics and and website, where uh, were simple page views. So in in the end, you came on a website, so you click a link, and then the server is basically getting a request this new page that it should load so basically maybe the list page or so and then it sends the data back and so the whole browser refreshes and loads the new page and so the the step between pages was always clear and significant and for example the place where the original analytics came from like the access logs so the, the logs that the server is basically creating every time someone is requesting a new page uh, was basically the foundation for page views. And so we had page views in the center. And in the end, um, sessions are basically a collection of page views. And so this is basically a derived metric um, or dimension, mostly first of all dimension, afterwards um, you can build a metric out of it, um, a derived dimension from a page view. So you, you can... you there are rules how, how Google is stitching together a session. And, um, and so this was at the core. And so when Google was starting, no one was really thinking about events. Um, but at some point, they introduced them because at some point, um, w websites became more interactive. So um, stuff was happening on the website that did not require uh, basically a full page refresh. Uh, so it... Maybe like there, you use JavaScript to just show a specific block or um, to to show a different tab and so on. But this all happened within a page, and not explicitly on a separate page. And so the page view model was not enough anymore. And so Google introduced events, and for some reasons they decided to use a very strange event structure. Um, it's strange because there were already some other tools around who use a different approach. And we come back to this approach because this is basically the new approach. But Google, for some reasons, just uh, said, okay, we basically have three dimensions that you can give 
uh, or that you can define when you're sending event data, um, actually are four, but we, we just do do the major ones. So we leave the value out, so the value was strange as well. And so we basically have these three. So we have category, action, label. And I would say the major question when I was working with people on a Google Analytics setup was like, yeah, so how should we use them? Because maybe, yeah, categories some way makes sense, but action maybe also, but what is label then? And so it was always difficult to really define, okay, um, how to use them. And so let's do an, a quick example. So let's assume we want to track newsletter subscriptions. And so what we could do is like, so we can say um, we define the category newsletter. And, and here already the discussions can start because, I mean, yeah, newsletter can make sense. So you basically define the categories about around the, let's say, the objects on the website that you have. So for example, newsletter or the newsletter sign up is, a, is an object that you have. And this could be, yeah, so this could be like newsletter. It could be also like a detail page and so on. So you could do this approach. I mean... Theoretically, you could also do, I don't know, signups. And then in an action, you define that it's actually a newsletter signup. So here you see a little bit of the problem. So you had to come up with a structure how you define categories. For me, actions were a little bit easier because in the end, it, the name already to tells what, what, what you can put in here. And so... Uh, I could just put in subscribe. So this was the action that happened. And so you could also say, don't have to do uh, past tense. So you can just say, okay, newsletter subscribe. I like the past tense because usually the tracking happens after the action happens on the website. And so then we have this <laughs> weird thing with label. And, and so label in the end, you can give additional context. And so the problem was that because we just had label, and sometimes you really have a lot of context that you wouldn't give. And so, for example, let's assume we want to add context to the newsletter subscribe event to, on the one hand, say where it has happened, and on secondly, um, show um, what kind of content the person wants to receive. So sometimes you have this newsletter si signups where you can say, okay, I'm interested in these kind of different topics. And so basically can define a topic. And so now we have a problem. We have two information that we want to give, but we just have one field. And so, I mean, what happened was like, we did something like this. Uh, let's say data. So I'm interested in data. Um, so we could do this. So we introduce a, a delimiter, which is easy to, let's say, it's easy to use. So we'd use, in that case, two underscores. So we maybe if we would have... So here we could use one underscore to define other topics as well, like, I don't know, content. Um, so, uh, But here you can already see, so it messes up. So I we created setups where, where we stuffed so much context information into the labels that we really have to have a very precise uh, documentation in the end so people could actually tell uh, at which position which value represents which kind of different information. So not really cool. Never was a fan of that because... Now, let's move on because let's say we look into the GA4. Now let's write it in the right way. So GA4. The events are in the center now. So uh, in Google Analytics 4, the events are basically like the core of the system, which totally makes sense. And another thing that has changed too, it's like we don't really have the sessions anymore in the center because we don't have the page view, which is basically the foundation of a session, but we have users. And so users is as long as we can identify them. So um, it might be a user can be, for example, a session when a person um, deletes cookies after some time because in the end, so in the web, a user usually is a cookie value and as long as the cookie value stays the same or it's first a cookie value, as long as it stays the same, it stays the same user. If users log in and you set um, like an ID, then you can persist user information. If you use um, it in, in a mobile application, so you have a device ID, then you have a more persistent user ID. So, But this is not about users, so this is about events. Um, so events are basically now first-class citizens. Before they were just an 
additional uh, enhancement of the setup, so now they are at the core. And so and the page view has not gone away, and even the session haven't gone away, but it doesn't really play a big role anymore. So the page view now is basically, uh, it's still there, it's still a report where you can see this, but in the end, under the hood, it's just a specific event, which totally makes sense. I mean, the page view is just a s significant or just a specific event, like, I don't know, um, Detail page viewed can be like uh, a very defined event, which is basically a page view. And so in the center now we have the events and the event structure has changed. So it's not this weird stuff anymore that we have here on the top, but Google now basically took what was already present in, in mobile analytics or in other, other analytics systems. So for example, like Hismetrics or segment um, was there and they introduce a very simple event model uh, which is basically event name and event parameter. So I always have to make sure that I don't mix up. So often in other systems this is often event properties but Google names them parameters. At some point I thought they named them attributes but I mean Yes, of course, Google always have to do stuff a little bit different. So we have event name and we have event, oops, no, we should definitely make this uh, plural because in the end you will have different parameters. And so let's take our example. Um, so maybe we just copy this down. Okay, here we go. So event name basically like um, is however you define it. But so there's a good practice in other systems as well um, that you basically use um, a combination of object and action. So this is the object we are talking about. This is the action. Sometimes you even put, let's say, the area where, where it's happening or some kind of category in, in front can make sense in bigger setups. I'm usually often don't do this, but well, it depends on how you design this. But so event name, I mean, event name is totally random, so you can call it whatever you want. So you can also call it, I don't know, like this. If, if you don't really want to show what kind of event you are sending uh, to the server, and so maybe you have a mapping table that then translate this into this. But put event, choose event names that are good to read so but we, we don't do a session now on, on how to create a tracking plan so this will be another video but let's say as a, as a very easy rules like um, the easier someone immediately understands what's happened here the better so because in the end this is people who work with the report so they have to understand the stuff and so this is not so different to what we had before we just have one field where we put the event name and now it becomes a little bit different so the event parameters are basically um, key value pair. So I can define a parameter. So for example, um, form location and I can give it a value. So footer, for example. Uh, so this is one parameter. So I gave it a name, form location and I gave it a value, in that case footer. So for example, when I have a newsletter subscribed event that can happen also in the footer, can happen on a specific page, can happen maybe even in the header or so. I can uh, just um, give a different value in the parameter here, but the core event always stays the same. So when I make a, a account or like a sum on all newsletter subscribed events, um, I just take the event name, so I get the total. And then I can say, oh, please split it up by form location. And so then I get a report where I can see, okay, in footer, I don't know, 20% sign up on the page, 70% uh, and they had a 10%. Um, so this gives me a lot more flexibility to create stuff. And let's add the second thing. So let's say topics. Topics. And so then I can say data and content. So because these were my two cop uh, topics I want to pass on. And <coughs> here you could think about, okay, should we maybe split it up? Can we maybe, should we introduce topic one, two, three, four? So to basically handle uh, four topics or so on. 
Um, depends on how you want to work with that. So this is definitely possible because if you split it up, then you can easily uh, better group the stuff later in the reports because then you can see, okay, how many people basically signed up for a data newsletter and so on. So this is a design decision. So for me, it's totally fine when I have all data now added to this. But what you can immediately see is like, this makes the whole structure maybe on first glance a little bit more complicated, but on the other hand, I would say more natural, because in the end, you have an event, and the parameters are basically the context around the event. So what additional information I can give about this event? And always with these simple rules like, don't define too many different events, so have more generic events, but put the details into the parameters. And so this is how we designed uh, tracking setups uh, for mobile for ages. And so Google now basically took what they already had in Firebase and Firebase was the same and basically added them um, here. And so this is the major difference in the data model. So it's not so complicated, not so different um, than, than, than the model before. And I would even say once you understand this, it should be easier for you because in the end it's it makes it really natural. So um, let's look at the difference. So we could also say like product viewed. And so then we have different oct uh, yeah, different, uh, different options. So for example, location. This could be um, the details so de or detail page. Let's say detail page. But it can also be the list. So you can uh, just swap here and can say location lists and or location recommended product carousel and so this is this is quite interesting so you have a generic product viewed event that can happen a bunch of time because people can view product on your website if you are an online store at a different kind of places but here in in the parameters you give the contents where context where basically people view this one and so and i mean the list goes on so for example like of course like the product has a name so i don't know shoe one, two, three, four, five, and here we go. And so now I could define all the parameters that describe this kind of product. Um, and so, in the end, this is this is how you how you now work in, in GA four. So not really so different um, to 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 the system that was there before. Um, once you really understand how you can translate the stuff that you're currently doing into the new thing. And so I say define five, six core events and then you're good to go. And then you really have a good understanding and then GA4, then you have to understood the essential thing that you have to understand about Google Analytics 4. And so then you're good to go. And so in next videos we will definitely look into how to create full tracking setups. And um, so, yeah, stay tuned, subscribe to the channel so that you will see when we, when we post or when we publish a new video.